Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another House of the Dragon video. So I'm going to do a breakdown of episode 5 after this video. I kind of wanted to talk about episode 6 first just because the trailer looked really good and I'm just really, really excited for the next part of the story here because you can kind of see where this is going. You can see where the finale is likely going to, you know, just where the story is going to go and you can just kind of see overall, you know, what they're building to here. And specifically, it was something that Aemond actually said about uh, Damon in this trailer here where I was like, oh, they're so building towards that moment. So yeah, so before we go any further, Make sure to be a subscriber if you do want to get all my House of the Dragon content like this. Episode 5 was really amazing. I'll just say that. It was a really incredible episode. Uh, I definitely, I, I preferred episode 4, but that's just because that's a part of the story, right? Like, episode 4 was like a big moment. It was a, an actual battle, like, with dragons, right? So, this episode was definitely more of the reaction episode. It was just like, what happened? You know, there was a lot of uh, Rhaenys' death aftermath, right? Like, there was a big response to that, and just like, what happened there? You're seeing a lot of people in pain, and yeah, I'll break that down more in my episode 5 video, but for episode six here this episode is really going to focus a lot on Rhaenyra trying to find people to actually uh like you know take the dragons and that was something that I, I really do like that they focused on I mean it makes sense it, it was a part of the story it is something that does happen in the books and it seems like it's going to happen in episode six in my opinion I, I think that's where they're going and I'll talk about it more in this video but I am wondering where they're going by the finale just based off of like in episode five uh I'd say Jaceris really played a big role in that episode and there were some moments where he made his mother proud and I was like I feel like that was foreshadowing of his death coming up very soon but anyways the focus in this episode is going to be for them to be able to you know I guess find people that can actually uh, claim these dragons here and in the books I don't actually remember like off the top of my head who claimed some of these dragons here I know one of the characters was Ulf the White who claimed Silverwing and he's actually a character in House of the Dragon so I feel like that's probably where they're going to go next here is they'll have him actually claim uh, Silverwing because we've seen him before and I think it just makes sense that he will be you know playing a role here in all of this and also I believe there was also Adam uh, Valerian I, I believe I actually I think it goes by Adam of Hull I believe we saw him at some point this season already so I think that that was all foreshadowing here for, for Rhaenyra here to have more of an army because obviously you know like losing Rhaenys and, and Melise to you know Aegon Sunfire I, I guess mostly it was Aemond right but it's because his dragon is just as massive and they're going to need the dragons that they have that are somewhat similar in size to be able to actually have dragon riders. And so that's going to be a big focus in episode six here. And I think they will succeed there's probably going to be deaths just as always, you know, like that's just sort of that's just what's going to happen here. You know, obviously they're going to find some people that aren't going to be successful here, but some people actually will be. And I'm really going to be interested in seeing how they how they do all of this. And I think that's going to be really the whole story of the episode. It's going to seem like they're failing a lot in the beginning, but by the end, they will succeed. The one part that I found very interesting in the trailer was when you hear Aemon say, you know, because uh, first of all, they're worried about Damon because if he becomes very successful in the Riverlands, that could be really, really bad for them. And Aemon does say, my uncle is a challenge, uh, you know, that I welcome. And if he dares so face me and so you know that this is something that they're setting up here, I believe, for the finale. Because what happens in the books is, around this point, Aemond goes to Hall to take uh, Hall over, but Damon's not there anymore. And it all sort of aligns up here for when they, they take over King's Landing. Which I feel like is where they're going here in the finale, because you're just going to leave Alicent, and really, you know, not a lot of people. And I think that that's why they're going to leave Dragonstone, because we heard a lot about that in episode 5 as well. Rhaenyra is just, she doesn't want to be in this place anymore. She's having a hard Hard time ruling just from you know staying inside uh i guess dragonstone she doesn't want to stay inside she wants to go out there and fight with everybody and that was a big moment in episode five as well she talked about like i'm literally sending out my own son to go out there and and do all these things and so like what am i going to do here and i think just is going to die at some point here probably episode seven i believe like seven or eight although i feel like it's going to be in seven and then that's just going to build up towards her taking over king's landing in in the finale or do they wait and have that happen in the premiere of season three i just think it makes sense because you're going to want to have aemond in heron hall and then he'll have his whole storyline there and whatnot and at the same time you're going to have aegon I guess go missing for a bit, but I believe it goes to Dragonstone. So it just seems like that's exactly where they're going right now. And I think that's sort of how they have all this laid out right now. We'll have to wait and see. We have a really cool shot here, though, with uh, or a scene with Aemond and Aegon. And it seems like Aemond is just basically like, I don't know if Aegon can speak yet. In episode five, it seemed like he tried to speak a little bit, but... I don't know if he's going to say anything about Aemond right away. Like, based off of the books anyways, I, I don't think he's going to really say anything. And I think it's because he's actually that terrified of, of Aemond. But everybody knows, you know, like, he doesn't have to say anything. Everybody already knows. 
Like, Amon is just, he's like the real villain, I feel like. Out of all the characters here, he's like the actual, like, real villain here. Because, I mean, you could argue it's it's him and Damon, right? In, in a sense. Which is, th- like, that's literally going to make the Battle Above God's Eye, like, the most amazing scene. Or the most amazing episode, I feel like, ever. We actually see Alicent and Amon talking here while Alicent is talking to Amon. And I really like this scene. Because you saw a lot of this in episode 5, where it really feels like Alicent is starting to feel really guilty for, I guess, Guess the way she parented you know her kids and whatnot maybe she wasn't you know there for them and just some of the stuff that they actually dealt with here because she's starting to see it with with Amond here and he does seem to be just really affected by a lot and I think Allison like that's the thing like when you look at team black and team green like the show has to play it where both of them like you're able to see both sides to it right personally I feel like just based off of where all of this started here because a lot of this started because of Otto Hightower but it depends on how you look at things it really does and I think that's the thing with the show like they do have to make you you know sympathize with all the characters like they have to make the characters likable at some point and i do think allison she's starting to realize what is happening here i think she's starting to realize just everything here i think she realizes that she was wrong about who viserys wanted in terms of an heir and i think she's just kind of realizing just where things are now you know obviously you can't really go back and change stuff like that but at this point you just kind of have to you know keep going and i think she's trying to help aemon out in any way that she can here and yeah i just thought this was a really cool scene but we have another shot here where we see rhaenyra and it looks like she's walking towards where the dragon are it's actually going to be interesting to see the pacing of a lot of this here because it, it feels like the ending point to the season it just makes sense for king's landing to fall or for Rhaenyra to actually take over uh, King's Landing. Because you see a shot like this here, and I don't think this is what is actually happening here in the trailer, but you see Alicent and and Helena, and it almost looks like everyone's reacting to something happening, like, above them. Like, the dragons are there, or something is happening here. And they're running, and they seem, like, terrified. So it feels like a moment like that would be happening, but it is just a little bit too soon. I think they have to get through, you know, the the whole Vermithor and Silverwing uh, storyline here, and then I think after that they'll get into some battles like there's a couple things that they could do there depending on where you know they go in episode seven they're gonna change some stuff up here i feel like because there's no way they're gonna end this season on, on like a cliffhanger i just don't see it ending in a way where rainier is gonna go and attack king's landing i feel like that would be just so i don't know underwhelming i guess maybe like if it ends in a way where she wants revenge and now she's gonna go out and uh take king's landing i, I feel like for season three that would mean that that, that would happen right away in episode one maybe in episode two, and then, yeah, you would play out that storyline, but again, like, if the season ends with Jaceris' death, like, say that happens in the finale, I also think that that is just kind of, it's underwhelming in a sense, because that's kind of the same way, you know, the, that season one ended. Season two, if it ends in the same exact way, it's just like, it's literally the same exact finale, so I just don't see them going in that direction. I, I feel like that's gonna happen at the end of episode seven, or, or whatever, just, I think there's eight episodes this season, right? There's not uh, nine? I'm pretty sure there's eight, so, I mean, if, it, if there's nine, and it makes way more sense because I have a little bit more time to do certain storylines. But even if there's eight, I think episode seven could be a pretty big episode and then episode eight I mean also just be a really incredible episode because I I think to start season three with Rhaenyra actually in King's Landing everyone everywhere and Aemon's literally at at Heron Hall and just where this story could go for season three in terms of promoting season three and just all the hype for that season it makes it all very refreshing and exciting because people are in different locations and then you can focus on that storyline and then maybe the finale to season three ends where you know Rhaenyra ends up leaving King's Landing this and that and yeah yeah, I just think it makes sense that they're building up to a moment like that because I just feel like Rhaenyra has just been she's been in Dragonstone for too long at this point I feel like but we'll have to wait and see where this goes here but these shots just really it just really feels like that's what's happening but I think it's still a little bit too early but I still think that moment is going to happen in the finale and then yeah the trailer ends with I believe this is Silver Wing right here so this is going to be a really incredible uh, dragon episode yeah really incredible to see and uh, yeah I'm excited for episode 6 so make sure to post all your thoughts down below I'm going to get to work on my episode 5 review and then I'll post that at some point later on tonight or it might be in the morning though I'll probably get it out tonight just because yeah tonight was the episode so yeah I'll post that tonight and yeah then we wait for episode 6 and then I'm excited for next week to see the episode 7 trailer and just 
see where the story is going to go here. Like, I just, I hope that we do see Rhaenyra taking King's Landing in the finale. I think it would be a really amazing conclusion to, like, just sort of this arc that we've been on here. And I think it would be a really cool way to end Season 2. You would have two really solid seasons here. And then in Season 3, you can just focus on other storylines where you have Rhaenyra and King's Landing dealing with, you know, some of the problems that are there now. You have Aemond at Harrenhal and that storyline that happens there. And you just have all of these storylines happening happening and I, I just think that it makes it way more interesting I think overall but if you just decide to focus on ending it on a cliffhanger I just feel like I don't know it's just it's kind of underwhelming in my opinion so I hope that they don't go there but yeah anyways hope you all enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one <laughs>